All right, so uh, today we're going to cover Google+. Plus. Um, this is another social network. This is a social network coming from Google. So I'm going to write some notes. You can write some notes on your own, you know, paper or on the computer if you'd like, but I'm going to provide you my notes at the end of the day. I'm going to put my notes in the network folder at the end of the day. Put a few notes here. Today's topic, Google+. Plus, The social network from Google. It was founded in about, I think, 2011, 2012 or so, something like that. It's been around a little while, but it hasn't gained as much traction as Facebook. Well, nothing has. There have been many other social networks out there that have come before and after Facebook, but none of them have been able to displace Facebook. Every few years is a new network that says, this is the Facebook killer, and none of them have worked. So Twitter uh, came out in 2006, Facebook in 2004, Google Plus in 2011, Pinterest also, I think in 2011, and lots of them coming out all the time. Just this year, at the beginning of the year, January, there was a brand new social network called Peach uh, that you probably never heard of. But it was out there, and it's still around, and I, because I'm in the industry, kind of have to keep up with it all, and I've used Peach, and it's fun. It's just, it's never going to replace Facebook. And probably less than a month ago, another social network came out. This one has a very creative title. It's called Hello. So, hello.com. Oh, they got that address. So, uh, this one is so new, I haven't really gotten into it at all just yet. As a matter of fact, I've been having trouble simply creating an account. It may be at the moment that it's becoming so popular initially that no one is able to create an account. And I've been trying and I can't. But hello. Not to be confused with hello. That one was out. <laughs> That one was out before Hello a few years, actually. That one was supposed to be the Facebook killer because every few months, it seems there's some Facebook controversy that the algorithm is skewed or that businesses can't reach their audience or that, whoops, another privacy debacle. And as I've said previously, personally, I hate Facebook. I don't like to use Facebook for personal purposes. But for business purposes, I love it. And I put aside my personal feelings. And then when I get hired uh, to do social media for a client, I do Facebook well. My company does Facebook well. But a few years ago, there had been another privacy snafu with Facebook. And then so people, uh, these smart people said, well, we're going to make a brand new social network that is all about never selling your personal information, having your privacy first and you know all the things that Facebook is the opposite of. And so they founded Ello, and it's been around. It's been around for at least three years. How many of you have ever heard of Ello before I mentioned it right now? One person. So there you go. It wasn't the Facebook killer. <laughs> but the cool thing about it is that there are so many social networks out there um, that could be interesting to get into uh, for personal purposes. For business purposes, do I need to get on Ello? Do I need to get on Hello? Do I need to get on Peach? Do I need to get on Orcut? Maybe not. Maybe I can focus on one or two of them, or perhaps the one that I'm talking about in this class, you know, these seven that I'm talking about. So that's why I mentioned these networks, because uh, I think they're going to be some of the most effective ones. Now, unfortunately, that computer doesn't work, so you yes, just have to take notes. Okay. So today's network then will be Google Plus. Go ahead and go to the address plus.google.com. Google Plus is at the address plus.google.com. Google Plus. Okay, so yet another social network. Now, Google Plus then was founded a few years after Twitter and Facebook and others. 
And so um, the purpose was Google was seeing that Facebook was getting a lot of users. Facebook was getting a lot of fame. And Google was seeing that people log on to Facebook and stay logged in all day long or for a long time. And so people then spend all of their time on Facebook and not go out to the rest of the web, you know, to other websites or to search on another website. Uh, Google was seeing that, that people would rather spend time on that network than their network, Google. So Google company then thought, okay, we'll make our own network. We'll make our own network where you can connect with friends and family, where you can share content, where you can connect with businesses, all the things that Facebook and the other networks do. Because then they saw that they were losing perhaps some traffic and market share to Facebook. And Google obviously is a company with billions of dollars uh, to invest, and they have. They've invested a lot of time and effort and money to uh, put out this network. But again, it didn't reach Facebook levels. Uh, by some estimates, Google Plus has approximately, because they don't release official numbers, 200 million to 400 million users, something like that, which sounds like a lot. But Facebook, by last count, has about 1.7 billion users. So a lot more people are on Facebook all over the world compared to Google Plus. Question? Um, but how many of those 1.7 billion are active? That number then does fall. I don't have that statistic at the moment. This is just a statistic of how many accounts exist. Right. But active is lower, but it is hundreds of millions. Right. Uh, it's often a safe bet to say you know, about 50% are active because someone creates a network, they're so happy about it, and then they stop using it a month later or whatever. Mm -hmm. So these are very big numbers, but yes, the active user, active users is lower. These are accounts, active users is lower, but it's still a lot. Would that include in Facebook, does that include like the business pages and the personal? Or yeah. Everything? So, um, Google Plus hasn't reached Facebook levels. Nothing has reached Facebook levels. Perhaps the one that might, might be Instagram. But guess what? Instagram is owned by Facebook. So, <laughs> so Instagram has about 500 million users. Now, at one point, Instagram was, again, a brand new network that was, uh, a lot of times when these networks start, there's a, there's like a, there's like a, a VIP time, a time that the only time you can get into them is through an invitation um, so that they work out the bugs and get buzz going and so forth. Then they release it for the rest of the public. And not to show off, but I was on Instagram from week one. So uh, I've been on it a while, which has been probably 2013 or so, something like that. And I've seen it going. In the beginning, Instagram itself also was iPhone only. You needed an iPhone to get into Instagram. For a while, it was iPhone only. That built some credibility or cachet, I suppose. And then eventually it went out to Android phones, Windows phones, etc., and now 500 million users. Um, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. We'll talk about Instagram month two um, next month, part two of the class. The reason we want Google Plus is because, because of the company behind uh, Google company behind Google Plus. Google Plus is owned by who? <laughs> Close. Google Plus is owned by Alphabet. If you didn't know, that's Google's current official name. The Google company that we've known for 15 years or whatever, a few years ago they changed their name to Alphabet. So technically all of these uh, Google products, they're from the company Alphabet. No one really knows that except like if you're into technology or finance and such. Everyone still calls it the Google company or whatever, but it's officially the Alphabet company. And Google is part of Alphabet. Google Maps is part of Alphabet. Google Plus is part of Alphabet. For all intents and purposes, I'm going to say, you know, Google owns Google Plus, Google owns Google Maps, Google owns Gmail, right? Google has a lot of hands in a lot of pies. So Gmail, Google Maps, um, what else is there? 
Google search, those Google autonomous cars, self-driving cars, Google Plus, lots of things. The Google company has their hands in a lot of things. In this list here, Google search is the one that is used the most. When you do a search, if you open your web browser, if you open your phone, you're going to search for something, and most likely you're going to use Google search. So Google search has approximately 60% um, market share. So about 60% of people all over the world are using a Google search. You might think that's a pretty low number. I thought it would be 100%. Nope, not even close. There's never been a search engine that has 100% market share. Yahoo, back in the 90s, had about like 98% market share. Back in the 90s, everyone was using Yahoo to search. Nowadays, not so much. Google uh, search eventually was invented 2004 or so. No, 1998, I think. Uh, and then they started to increase in market share because their results were better than Yahoo's and eventually they surpassed Yahoo. I think they got up to maybe 80% market share. 80% of people were using Google a few years ago. Now it's not 80% anymore. It's decreased because there's so much competition. Just like remember where there were only three channels on TV and now there's 500 channels. You know we're never gonna see again uh, the number one watched show of all time was the last episode of MASH when there were three channels. We're never going to see, you know, 20 million or 50 million people, whatever, watching one show. Like the biggest show right now, The Walking Dead, gets 10 million people and people are like, wow, it's so watched. MASH had, you know, 50 million people watching it. So there's so much competition, it's so spread out. Google then has lost some market share. Of course, lots and lots and lots of people still use Google. The point for us is Google connects all their services together, like Google Plus. So if I get my business on Google Plus, that gives me a head start on the competition. If I get my biz on Google Plus, I get priority on Google Search. And to some degree, it would make sense because this is one company. People forget that these are big old companies that are, you know, in it for capitalism, which is good and bad. But this company, of course, is going to promote its products above the competition. It's a company. Just like, you know, Johnson & Johnson is going to promote its products over Unilever. Um, just like Walmart is going to promote its products over Target. They're all promoting their products. It's, it's part of the way, it's how things are. So if my business then is on their network, that could help me. That's one of the big reasons you might think about getting on Google+, Plus, the priority. Let me show you an example of that right now. If I go over to google.com to do a Google search, and I type in comic book shops near me, I get a cool map with shops plus their ratings and such and then the rest over here plain text listings some people would think these items up here they probably paid for them their ads uh, no these these particular ones are not ads the ones that are ads are marked as ads you've probably done a search uh, and seen uh, right here. This is an ad because it's marked as an ad. They paid to get placed number one. Amazon paid to be number one on this search that I did. And then second place, my comic shop paid to be number one. These ones that don't have the ad didn't pay for it. They've reached that point for various factors. Um, and this one right here was not paid. Question? Yeah, actually Google has a, another site which is all for the income on the top. It's called Web or something. It's called what? I don't know. We were discussing last night and we forgot the name. 
but it's like a lead, a commercial for Google, which makes 68% of the Google income. Google AdWords? Yeah, Google AdWords. Yeah, that's related to these ads here, definitely, uh, and, and all of that. It's a little bit off of our topic, but yeah, there's Google uh, AdWords uh, that create a lot of profit. Yeah. Um, so here, the, uh, this map is coming courtesy of a Google Plus page, which you can set up for free, uh, because then I'm going to have my business put on a little map if my business is a local business, it can put me on a map. It can give the users, the people that are searching, driving directions. It can give them a link to my website. It can give them reviews because nowadays, with so much competition, reviews are one of the most important things. How do I know that my bakery is better than another bakery? Well, customers are going to decide that. Customers are going to go on Yelp or Google reviews to give a review or Facebook reviews. There's reviews on Facebook now too. There's reviews everywhere. Reviews on Yelp, reviews on the yellow pages, reviews on Google Plus, on uh, Facebook, lots of review sites out there. So I'm going to get priority if my business is on Google Plus because I'm going to get this nice sort of like spotlight result and then I can go to more places and they will be listed there and these are legitimate businesses but I don't quite feel like clicking on any of these these perhaps are better things to click on because of the reviews look at these reviews and that's gonna help me decide yes there's gonna be some percentage of people that think that's an ad and not click it because a lot of people avoid the ads on purpose I don't want to get results that someone paid for these are not paid results. And if you yourself would not have clicked on them because it looks like an ad, that's okay. Remember, 60% market share. Lots and lots and lots of people seeing these, this result, and lots and lots of people clicking. So you personally or your circle of friends is not a very good uh, you know, sample size to make these decisions uh, based on the research and, and the, the education and, and all. This works. It calls people's attention. I want to click on that. I want that business. Yes. What other criteria do you use? So there are three comic book stores here, but if there are ten that are on Google Plus, it does show more. If you there's three listed at the very top because there's limited space, then you click more places and they will all then be shown. Is that based on proximity to the? There's a lot of factors. This is the whole concept of search engine optimization, which is the other class that I teach because there's a lot of factors. I can't say one or two. There's a lot of them, and some of them are secret factors, unfortunately, because they're trade secrets. Google is not the only search engine. There's still Yahoo. There's also Bing, AltaVista. So each search engine is trying to give results that are the best. So some of the ways of how do I rank the best are secret. Other ways are not. In the SEO class, we go into detail. But it could be proximity, it could be star ratings also. A 4.5 is higher than a 3.4, but it's still a 4.5 here. But that has 14 reviews and that has only 11. There's just so many factors and some of it seems, you know, like voodoo. How, do, how does it work? <laughs> you can try as much as you can and you don't crack the number one spot. But still, being third place on page one is still great. Question over here? If your business isn't open for a couple of months, Hmm. I would um, create perhaps a test version to learn how it works, the do's and don'ts, the pitfalls, and get familiar and comfortable with it. You can then delete that testing account, and then when you're ready for your real company, you can then open up the real version. Because yes, if we create an account at the moment, it will be live for everyone to see. So this is one of the reasons to get a Google Plus, to get this priority over the competition. Uh, you don't have to have a local business, you mean, I mean a business on an actual street to get this. But let's make some notes here. Yes? So this would be great. So wait, the screen that you have up underneath your notes, mm -hmm. that box, is everything that's on Google Plus and everything below it is not? Is that what it's specifically showing is Google Plus content right here. 
but I see comics and stuff here, and I also see them right here. So it might show them in both places for some reason. Yes? Well, Google.com is simply a Google search. You go to Google.com and you're about to search. Uh, over on Google Plus or Plus.Google, this is the actual social network, which ties into Google search, but here is where we are going to set up our business with pictures and listings and all of that and use it as a social network. Yes. Um, you mentioned last week that originally if you had a Gmail account, you automatically got mm -hmm. a Google Plus account. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And so if we've not used it, is there a way to find out? When yeah, we're going to try to log in in just a moment, and then we're going to see how that's all set up. So if I get my business on Google Plus, I get priority. You get a nice listing if you are a local business. If you're not a local business, meaning that you've got a company that sells throughout the U.S. or you don't have, or the world, or you don't have an actual store on Main Street or whatever, you can still create a Google Plus page. Uh, it's just that you won't get put on a map because you don't exist at a location. Uh, you can get ratings, you know, reviews, valuable for building and a clientele or an audience. Review sites, again, they're very valuable. Uh, we don't, I don't cover that in, in these classes. I'm still trying to figure out how to teach that uh, because that's so specific for business, for individual businesses. I've had a hard time figuring out how to teach it for a class, the review sites, how to set them up and use them effectively because everyone's so different. Whatever that I would talk about for, uh, for how to use these review sites for for the class might not apply to most people because people have different businesses. So we'll see then that having review sites is invaluable because your audience can then be free advertising for you to show uh, how good your company is and to entice people to buy your product. Uh, th this again, the purpose is uh, find, build, and nurture an audience, customers. All the social networks allow you to find an audience, to connect with them, to nurture them, to keep them coming back, to of course then buy a product perhaps. So. Um, the, uh, the purpose of this network, like every other network, will be that, to find that audience. So over at plus.google.com, um, we get a little bit of a preview. I see these sort of sections. One of the things that I like about Google Plus is that you can compartmentalize very well. You can target very well who would care about your company or products. Here it's showing me content about technology, wildlife photography, architecture, and the underground, owls. So it's showing me content, a specific kind of content. Um, these are known as collections. Google Plus, I'm going to say unique Google Plus differentiators. I can't spell it, so I'll say items. Unique Google Plus items, collections, communities. To backtrack a little bit about Twitter, Twitter unique items. The big one is hashtags. We'll see what these are, of course, as we get into it. Uh, over on Twitter, people want to focus on using hashtags. On Google Plus, we have collections and or communities. We'll see what they are and how, how to use them. But both of these are the secret to reaching the right audience. All of these here are the secret to, to reaching the right audience. Because all of these, in short, are topics. 
topics to reach an audience. So if my business, Victor's Bakery, is a bakery about food and such, well, if I reach the audience about food uh, via a hashtag or via a community uh, or on Google or on Facebook via a group or on Pinterest via a pin board, you know, they all have a way to reach an audience, which we'll look at. But uh, if I reach that audience on a particular topic, I've succeeded. We saw on Twitter that I have to deal with number of followers. If I have 10 followers, that's potentially 10 customers. I need more followers. Same thing with Google Plus. I need more followers. But the big head start on Google Plus that I really like and is very effective are collections and communities. So what we're going to do then is um, we're going to either sign in or create an account. I said previously that if you've got a Gmail account, you've already got most likely a Google Plus. It just perhaps hasn't been set up. And it's always difficult to teach this part of the class, so we'll see how it goes. But I'm going to try to be as generic as possible um, here on plus.google.com at the top right corner. Click Sign In. If you don't have an account, it will then ask you create an account. If you have a Gmail address, you can use it. The question always comes up, should I use my personal or my business? It does not matter. It's up to you. What I will say is the, one of the differences with Google Plus as opposed to Twitter is one Gmail can control many Google Plus accounts or profiles. One Gmail or one email address. It could be from Hotmail or whatever. One email address can control many. And to tell you, to get ahead of ourselves here, um, part of the complication to teach this at the beginning is to wrap our minds around that one person can manage many Google Plus profiles. Um, an example would be myself. As I said, I teach this stuff, but I'm also part of a company that we do this for clients. So I use my Gmail to create the client's Google Plus account, and I give the client access to their account. I give everyone on my team access to the account. I give the client access to their account. But I, through my personal Gmail, created the Google Plus page. Then I allowed managers to manage it. So Google Plus has managers. Someone has to create the business, the business page and then allow more people to control it. And everyone will then log in with their own credentials. You'll log in with your Gmail, I'll log in with my Gmail, they log in with their Gmail, Everyone logs in with their own. We're not sharing the same email. We're not sharing the same password. That's a security risk. Because if one person doesn't practice good cybersecurity, the whole thing goes down. But if I practice good cybersecurity and someone else on the, uh, in the company doesn't, and they get hacked, well, I can just detach that person from the account, and then they're, they're, they're no longer a problem. We'll see how to do that later, of course. You can use a personal Gmail or a business Gmail. Doesn't matter. So here then, this is what you need to decide. Either sign in with personal or business email or create an account. I'm not going to go through the process of creating the account. It's pretty straightforward. You fill in a bunch of info. You either pick a Gmail address or use your existing one fill in some information to prove that you're a real person, not a spammer. Or, if you don't create an account, you're going to sign in. So take a moment to either sign in or sign up. If you need a little help with that, call me over. Yes. So when I originally uh, created my Gmail account, I had one Gmail. And then I started adding on a couple of different um, email accounts. 
right. So my Google Plus is tied to the original um, first Gmail. And let, let me let me cut you off right there. You might have a very complex question that might okay. be best answered if I if I uh, touch base with. Okay. Okay, so let's take a moment to either sign in or sign up. If you have any trouble, call me over. Where did the other sign-in sheets end up? The pink sheets? Where did they end Okay, so the confusing thing 
is also the powerful thing about Google Plus in that I'm able to manage multiple accounts but it's gonna be confusing perhaps in the beginning which one am I using and it might be that perhaps on accident you post the wrong thing to the wrong account sometimes that happens um, the way that we need to know what we're doing is on the top right corner after I've signed in if you ended up anywhere else that's okay but I'm still looking at these collections if you're anywhere else that's okay but look on the top right corner I see a picture of myself this shows that it's my account I've signed in on my account you may see your picture you may just see your initial but if you see either your picture or your initial that means you've signed in now if you click on your picture or your initial up there notice on mine it's got my picture it's my personal account and then below it look at all of these businesses that I'm managing for yourself you may have businesses that you're managing or most likely you don't and that's what we're gonna talk about today obviously because I don't want to post my company stuff on my personal account that's separate I'm helping manage these businesses you know this restaurant or this toy company or whatever this these companies I'm helping I've been hired to work with these companies I wouldn't be posting the latest product for sale as Victor at this restaurant that doesn't make sense the restaurant should be posting the latest coupon at their business page so if you don't have any business listed that's what we're gonna talk about first we need to create a business because Google Plus by default gives you a personal profile by default you get a personal profile on Google Plus you then need to create a business page to use it as a business I'll show you how to do that in just a moment but the default is everyone gets a personal one um, people then always ask do I, I, I don't want that I just want the business one um, I think they're changing it but for all intents and purposes we need the personal account to then create one or more business accounts and notice the terminology personal profile business page I think those terms are very generic Facebook uses them also you have a personal Facebook page uh, a personal Facebook profile or you have a business Facebook page profile is for the person page is for the business very basic words they should have used other words but I guess there aren't other accurate words a page is for a business a profile is for a person so if I see on the top right corner Google Plus profile Google Plus page Google Plus page these are all businesses this is my personal at the top I will show you that as soon as you log in you'll have your personal and what I would need to do then is click up there and switch to a business then it would show me my business content uh, most of you don't have that so we need to spend a little moment first to create the business uh, <coughs> profile let's say create or manage the Google Plus business page at the address business.google.com yet another Google website yet another Google property all tied to the same login information so let's take a little detour here if you manage to sign in very good if not go to this website anyway here business.google.com business.google.com again this will probably be, be pretty different for most 
for most of you if you've never used this. For me, because I'm using an account that already exists, for me it says, here are your brand pages. Here are these company pages you manage. There's brand pages at the top. Or locations. Here are the Google Plus businesses that have a location. Um, that have a location that are on a map. Some of these businesses are on a map, a physical location. They've got a location tab. Some of these have a brand. Now, some of you may be seeing a map of the US. Just hold on a minute there. AdWords. So because I've got this already set up, you're probably seeing something different than me. If this is the first time you're seeing it, you might have a map. And what you're going to be doing is it's going to be asking you to choose the location of your business. Let me kind of look over people's shoulders for a moment. We change this once in a while. So if you've got show people, you're open for business, click on start now. Thank you. 
All right, so if you see the show people in your business, click on that little green icon, and then you might see just a moment, you might see a map. So again, once we get past this, just one moment, once we get past this speed bump. Uh, I think we'll, we'll be on the right track, but what we need to figure out here is because people might have had this account beforehand or it's brand new now, everyone's in a different place, and this is what I'm saying, this is the hard part to teach. Once we get this figured out, we'll be on track. But what I want to do is, if you've got the map visible, okay, wait at that moment. If you've got a different screen visible, just wait a moment. Because the whole point of the business.google page is that this is where you're going to manage either a location or a brand page. A location is a Google Plus page with a location. A brand page is a Google Plus page without a location. So you need to figure out, before we go further, will you have a location page or will you have a brand page? Location page if your biz has a physical location. Uh, brand page if your biz does not have a physical location. The only, re the only way you're going to get on a map on Google is if you have a physical location. So if I've got Victor's Bakery, I'm probably going to set up, as and I'll show us how in a moment, a location page. If instead I've got Victor's Web Designs, well, I don't have a physical location. So I'm going to set up a brand page, and I'll show us how also. But this is the main thing you need to decide early on. Do you need to put your place on a location on a map? Or simply have a brand page without a location. Can you change that later? Just one at a time. Remember, raise your hands. Um, so uh, yes, you can change it. Although it might not be as easy as it should be, but we are able to change it. Uh, question behind you. Yes. The first one that said something. Um, I um, I came up, but I don't know how. I changed my business name about two years ago. It's coming up with my old name. I don't recall setting this up, but guys are you know. Let me say this to the whole class. Okay. If any of these things are like already set up, we might need to have individual one-on-one -on -one for some people. Okay. So I'm going to try to do it again, the most generic for everyone, and then we can have the individual help for people. So what I'm going to, what I'm going to say is, what we're going to do is create, even if you've got an account that already exists, it might be best to create a brand new testing account, a brand new like a sandbox account, which then we can delete a little bit later, just to learn how it works. Question? Um, would it be more beneficial to have a location page because we set that through to have a platform? Yes, if it's truthful, you know, if are you going to put your home address? If I'm Victor's web designs and I'm running out of my garage, I need to put my home address to be on a map. So I don't want to put my home address on the Google map. I could if I'm okay with that, but that's the point of choosing the, the location because you're going to get put on a map. Yes? Where, where do you make that distinction if you want to be a brand versus a that's, that's what I'm getting to. So for some of you, you might easily be able to set this up like this. If you're seeing a map or something else, what happens if you click on the three line menu at the top left here? These three little lines, click on that menu. Um, mine says all locations create a business account. Yeah, they've changed this again. I've been seeing on these last several times that I've taught this class with Google Plus, they've been changing this, so it makes it even harder to teach it. So whatever is there, okay, let's ignore that for the moment. Let's go here. Uh, click on support. This one seems to have worked, but it's going to be a few more steps. And I'm going to write it down in the notes here. How to set up a... How to set up a Google plus business page, go to business.google.com, click 
click the three line menu at top left, select support, and then search. What's next? Uh, click the menu, click support. Okay, so the little search box pops up. In the search box that pops up, you're going to search for create a Google Plus brand page. So that phrase, search for that phrase in that little pop-up box. Create a Google Plus brand page. So in this search here, I'm going to search for that. Press enter to search. Here then will help us to decide which we need to do. Brand page, which is no location, or claim your business listing if you are a location. And there could be other ones that might be useful to you individually if you've already got an account or two. Some of these questions I'll try to help during the lab times and such. Some of these questions I, I'm not going to be able to answer because they're very specific to people. The cool thing though is Google does have a contact where you can get a real person to talk to you. So if none of these help features can help you, or if I can't help you, the, the last choice is if I select phone number there and I put in my phone number, they will call me and I'll be able to talk to a real person to figure out the problem. And I've done this. I've done this at 11 p.m. on a Friday night uh, with a client. We needed to figure this out. We called them up. We figured out their problem. They had like duplicate pages and all this weird stuff. We figured it out. I, I, didn't, I couldn't figure it out, so we called Google directly. There is a phone number. There's also live chat and email. But that phone number does connect you. For us at the moment, perhaps so that we all learn the same thing, I'm going to say again, if you've already got a page on Google+, perhaps we are still going to create a brand new one to see how it works and then delete that one and apply it to your real one. Perhaps you've never set this up before and you want to learn it, so the brand page will still work. I'm still going to recommend all of us to create a brand page even if you have a physical location because the physical location is going to want to verify that oftentimes by a, a phone call. If I'm going to claim my business, my location, at 123 Main Street, Google is going to call me at 123 Main Street right now to verify that I exist at 123 Main Street because this is to prevent fraud. I'm going to claim my competitor's business and I'm going to put weird stuff there. I'm going to put bad pictures. They're another bakery, so I'm going to upload pictures of cockroaches in the cupcakes. <laughs> So to prevent that, Google will call the business to confirm you are the real legitimate business. So if you have a real legitimate business on Main Street, I would still recommend don't set up the location yet. But you saw the steps to get there, which I'm going to put in the notes in the folder at the end of the day. So I'm going to recommend for everyone right now to create a brand page. It'll give us all the benefits of the local location one, but without the headache of verifying. And we can delete it. I'll show you how to delete it later. So I'm going to select Create a Brand Page on Google. It's going to give you a lot of info, great, and then how to do it on desktop or mobile. We're on, the, we're on a desktop computer, so we'll select Desktop. Click that link. It's a very specific link. So we have to find it in their help system, which is not user-friendly at all, unfortunately. I'm here to tell you how to do it, and I'm putting it in my notes, which I will give to you at the end of the day. Create a Google, select support, create a Google Plus page, okay, search that, click the button, the result that was create a brand page on Google. And then click in the desktop section in the desktop section here number one visit Google my business it's a different address than the one I gave you gave you previously click visit uh, Google my business okay. 
that then might make a pop-up appear. It should take you to a screen that looks like this. Let's pause here. If everyone is on track here, good. Anyone need a little help getting to this screen? The support screen? Mm -hmm. No, uh, they asked for a security code. And I tried to get the security code. So, yeah. Let's click on the lines. Let's click on support. Let's click on the search box right here. Type in create a request page. Maybe it's just not true. Scroll down to the desktop.
All right, so when we're on this screen right here, uh, it's is asking us your type of business, and there are not a lot of them to choose from, but um, each one of them should work. And again, for our purposes, because we're kind of just dealing with a testing account, any of these should work, but I'm going to choose brand. Maybe I do have a location on Main Street, but again, the whole point of this is to just get an account for the moment. So I'm going to select brand. page name. So here's the name of my business. So I would type something like Victor's Bakery or just make it up since this is just a testing account. If I've got a, a website, if this were my real Google Plus page, I would then put in the address of my website. I don't have to put it in, but uh, it's useful because as I said with Twitter, that um, I still want to lead people back to my website. That's where I have my shopping cart. That's where I have my contact form or donation button or whatever. I can't actually directly sell my product on Google+. I can't sell my product directly on Twitter, Pinterest, whatever. I still guide them back to my shop. Type of page. Not a lot to choose from, but one of those. And then you have to agree to these terms. If you want to use Google+, you have to agree to the terms. If you click on it, you'll see what the terms are. Basically, it's about not abusing the system, all of that. Uh, there'll then be the button there, Create Page. Click that. You might get a little pop-up that says, Welcome to Google My Business. I'm going to skip the tour for the moment uh, because what I'll be talking about uh, in the class will be what they're talking about here. So uh, I'm going to skip that tour. And then now, on the top right corner, hopefully, if you click on the top right corner, uh, I've got just the initial of my business. But if I click on that, now it's showing me the different businesses. Hopefully it's showing you the different businesses that you're, that you're running. So I'm able to click on that logo and click on my icon to go back to the personal Google+. Plus. I'm able to click on the logo and go back to my business. So we're going to do our first pause right here for our first break, uh, just to make sure everyone's able to get to this point, uh, and then we're going to go on. So we're going to take a 10-minute break. It's 10.46. We'll be back at 10.56. When we come back, we should hopefully have an account, and then we'll start to use it.